All right, here we go. So, I'm over at my buddy Tommy's house. He's not actually here, but he said I could come in and use it. Well, here's the molding bench. This here's a flask. We got, excuse the extremely unsteady cam here. This is a molding board underneath it. We gotta just show you some of the stuff. Here's our sand. And this is a Petrobond. And you see, when it squeezes together, it takes a shape. So this is working pretty good. It's really nasty, dirty stuff, though. Oh, here's... This is the ram. I think another name for it is called a peen. That's probably a more proper name for it. And over here, we get a whole assortment of different stuff. Little sticks and mallets. Got a hammer here. Uh, compressed air, that's not on at the moment. And uh, somewhere in here, we should have a sprue cutter. I don't see it. Oh, here we go. This is a this is what a you know a real professional sprue cutter looks like. Hollow tube. Uh, a lot of times though, we'll just use a you know a dowel that's been tapered. That works just as well to make you know you're just making a hole. And then uh, we've got tools like these here. And this is called a spoon. And this is for getting there and kind of digging out a trench or whatever if you're making the gateways and things like that. All right, so we got that. The next thing we need is a pattern. And what do you know? We got a nice clean new pattern. I'm going to mess up right now getting it all nice and dirty. See if I can do this one-handed. So on the flask, there's a top and a bottom. And the top part is called the cope. And the bottom... It's called the drag. So this is the drag. See how it's got these pins here? So those pins fit down into some holes in this molding board. There we go. Okay. So the next thing we do, we want to dust this with some parting dust. Because we don't want anything to stick to that board. All right, so there we go, seasoned lightly, and then uh, I really need to do this to the pattern too, should have, oh sorry I'm getting all out of frame here, I want to try to get a pretty good amount of it on here where it's, when a pattern is brand new it doesn't seem to release from the sand as good after after it's been used a couple times, and I don't know if it gets smoothed up or I don't know what the deal is, but it always seems to work better after it's been used a few times. Okay, so now the next step, I'm going to grab our trowel over here, another tool, and we're going to start filling this in. All right. And you don't want to fill this here clear to the top. You want to get a fair amount in here though. If we were doing this, uh, this is just a test run here just to make sure this pattern comes out good. But uh, if we were doing it for real, we would put another grade of sand on there. It's a facing sand, which is finer. Okay, so now we're gonna tamp this all down. I gotta be careful because the, the pattern, the end of the pattern is right there. I don't want to hit that. So I kind of pack this down here. And it's kind of a touchy thing, like how tight you go with packing this. If you're using green sand, I think it's even more touchy. Uh, although that's just my recollection from what I believe I've read. I could be entirely wrong. But the Petrobon, I think it has a little bit more space between it, and the gases can escape through the sand better. I think green sand is a little bit tighter. Okay, tamp that there all down real good. Okay, so now you can see here it's kind of... Let me zoom in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so you can see where it's, it's kind of smooth right there. Uh, that's not necessarily 
such a great thing for getting another layer on there so we're going to kind of just score this up just a little bit with the spoon and that'll that'll give her next layer of sand something to kind of bind into all right now well, this time here we can pretty much fill this thing up i think You'll have to excuse me if the camera is not very steady. I'm doing this all handheld and one-handed. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to watch the screen and watch your work all at the same time. Good thing to do too here is uh, kind of pack it down into the corners really good. The corners always seem to be, I don't know, hard to get compacted properly, I guess. It always amazes me every time I do this how just how much sand actually fits in this box. I mean, the first time I pretty much filled it half or three quarters, I would say, maybe. And then I filled it up over the top, right? And look, it's all, it's not even still yet enough to fill this whole box. pattern in there. You remember that thing was kind of glued back together from, I don't know, about six different pieces. So I kind of don't want to beat on it too hard. All right, there should be enough here now. Now we use the flat side. Pack that all down real good there. I really should have brought my tripod. All right. Now the next thing I need to do is strike that off because, of course, this is higher than this flask, right? We want this to sit pretty flat. So I think I'm going to stop the video here right now, strike it off, and then I'll, I'll shoot another segment here when I flip it over. Alrighty, so on the back side, I just used a, uh, a flat steel bar to kind of scrape the bottom of it flat. And uh, yeah, that's something you can see in plenty of other videos. So what you can see now, uh, we've got a bunch of sand sort of, uh, this pattern is trapped in here right now. So what we have to do, it's... Uh, it's a part, we've got to part it out. So we've got to get everything that's on top of the pattern. That's got to go away. So I know I've got a spoke right down here because I can. That's where my my handle is going to go. So I'm going to kind of just follow this down, right? And then I can see the center of the hub right there. And of course, there's going to be another spoke right over here. All right. So we'll come over this way, and I know there's another one here coming out this way. Yeah, get most of the sand out of the way here. In a minute here, I'm going to come down and kind of get a little bit more fussy about what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to get the majority of this sand out of here. So this is... If you had a match plate or something like that, you could actually avoid this whole process, but uh, I only need two castings of this part, so I really don't need, you know, making a match plate's a lot of work for, uh, you know, if you're making 
many many copies of a part that's that's a much better way to go because it makes the molding so much easier you know you just kind of pack the sand in there so i've got another parting line here around all these these holes in between the spokes that i've got a part down to i want to kind of make sure yeah, i wish i had the compressed air on right now i could blow some of this stuff out of here and get a brush here. All right, this guy's gonna be my friend. I wanna get most of it out of there. Again, I apologize about the, uh, the cinematography here is probably a little bit lower than normal. Not that it's that high to begin with anyway. All right. So what I wanna do right now, I kinda wanna pack this sand in here make sure it's really good and firm right in there that'll make it where i can cut it out easier and it should leave a good line so i'm just gonna use the old trusty finger here pack this sand in you can use a i don't see one around here I think he's got a little billows. Little billows or compressed air works pretty good for blowing the sand out of here. And you can't be too shy about blowing on this stuff because, you know, if it falls apart just by blowing on it, well, what's going to happen when you start pouring metal in there, you know? It needs to be fairly durable. So, get that firmed up real good. <coughs> Now I can see right here, I'm actually a little bit below my parting line, so I gotta put a little extra sand back in here. And I probably should have done it before I came to this point, but it's always a good idea to, I think that's the parting line right there. If I had highlighted it with another color or something it would have really stood out here right now but I was a delinquent in that that practice so we're gonna have to do it the hard way I guess okay that's down to the parting line right there hope you all can see this Pretty much already on the parting line over here. <laughs> All right. So I hope that was enough. I don't have very much of a battery here right now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this segment here, and I'll show you the next part after we get the uh, pattern all parted down. Alrighty, I believe I've got that parted out just about good enough. So you can see you can, like I said, I really need to highlight my parting lines, but uh, that looks to me like we got about half of it out. So the next thing to do is. Put the cope onto the box here, or excuse me, proper name's the drag. So we'll put the cope on the drag, and uh, most of his boxes have got little smiley face match marks or something made on the outside, which is always a good idea. Uh, I don't see one on this one here, but uh, the latches don't seem to match very good if I put the box the other way around. Okay, so anyway, got that. Now, back to our parting dust. 
and this will keep the uh, the other half of the mold. A lot of people get confused about what a pattern, and what a mold is. The mold is the shape, you know, the impression left by the the pattern in the sand or in whatever media. If you're doing like lost wax or something like that, it would probably be in a a plaster, something like that. I got a little bit of loose sand floating around here. Anyway, so we dust this stuff here kind of all around. Make sure it's, you don't want too much of it on the surface because it can actually kind of really ruin the texture of your part. Like I said, this is not even going to be a cast piece, but more or less we'll kind of pretend, I guess. Yeah, in the end, it won't really matter if there's a lot of flash around the outside because that's all going to get machined off anyway. So the only really important parting lines are down in here around these openings. Everything else should come out pretty well. Okay, so I'm going to ram this side up, and then we'll show you how to break them up. I don't know what happened here, but it seems like the light has changed a lot. Okay, so we got the cope, which is the top part, molded up on top of the... Uh, the pattern and everything that's sitting in the drag. So now, a couple things we got to do. We want to cut our pouring sprue. And uh, ordinarily, if I was thinking a little bit more ahead of time, I would have put some marks out here. You know, like, I don't know, one over here, one over here. And kind of make a crosshair where I know I would not hit my pattern. Uh, but I know it's more or less in the center, so I'm going to just put it over here. And drive this thing in. That should be about enough. Oh, I gotta go just a little bit more. All right, uh, there we go. And then out comes all that. All right. And then we need to carve a little base in here. This is an awful small hole to try to hit, so we want to. I'm going to open this up a little bit. That way it makes it harder to miss the target, right? Whenever you're pouring the metal, you want to try to avoid any swirls in there. So, you know, they say to try to pour it straight in the hole and keep it flowing until the mold is full. And then stop. You don't want to start and stop. You know, you might metal could freeze off in there if you got especially if you got really thin section uh, this one here is pretty thick so I don't think it would freeze off too fast on you but nonetheless it might um, okay so now the next thing and I've already unlatched the box here all the way around let me just double check yep it's all good so now <clears throat> we want to kind of start rattling this thing here a little bit to try to we got to separate the two halves of the mold and uh, this will make it a little bit easier. So we just got a ball peen hammer and we're just going to tap on the box a little bit. Just kind of get it moving. And like I said, this will this will help separate everything out because we not only are we having to separate this this flat plane across here, but the pattern is going to have to, you know, and it's a complicated shape. That's all kind of packed pretty tight to sand in there, so we got to kind of move it around. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but if you can see the box is sliding a little now. So we've, we've actually slightly enlarged the sand around the pattern on the top now. Not very much here. 32nd of an inch, probably. Okay, so uh, I'm going to need both hands, so I'm going to go ahead and cut away, and I'm going to pick up the mold. And hopefully, we don't have a disaster. Well, can you say jinx? Sure enough, I guess I didn't get my sand packed good enough. So, we're going to have to start over again, at least on this half. I'll uh, cut back here as long as my battery keeps holding out. We may have to pick this up another day, I don't know. We'll see. Alright, well, we got it open this time, but uh, halfway open? I don't know, maybe I didn't get quite enough parting dust on this here, or it was another bad ram up. But at any rate, you can see, you come in here and look at the mold. It actually looks like the hand wheel part of it 
is parting out really nice. So that's that's good. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do here now, and this is kind of scary trying to do this one-handed. Um, let's see, maybe I can. Here, can you hold that for me? If I can get that on here and get a stick or something, yeah. My battery's complaining it's gonna die. So we gotta shake this pattern here a little bit too. This is, I'm sure you can appreciate how difficult this is right now. I think I need a heavier Thing. Let me try that. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Get a different stick here. Let me try tapping straight down right here. That might help a little bit. All right. See if this thing's gonna come out. Okay, I can't do this one-handed, so we'll see if I can draw this piece out. I'll okay, right. well I got that part out of there. Got a little bit of sand tore right here, but not too bad. And then over here, that'll just leave a little bit of flash, and that can be cleaned up afterwards. It looks like the uh, yeah, you can even see the numbers. The original factory part numbers are, are shown. Well, I can't really see that. Probably too good. Uh, maybe in the finished part you'd see it. They'll never be as clear as they were on the first go, but uh, they're certainly a lot closer right now than they're going to be if we just bought one off the shelf somewhere, right? So anyway, after this, assuming that the pattern hadn't broken to pieces, or excuse me, even I get confused, the mold hadn't broken up, we would be uh, just about ready. We close it up. Oh, well, there's one more thing we got to do here. We got to build a. So the the sprue comes down here. We need to cut a gate. So we kind of come in something like this here, and dig out a little little groove like that. This is where your air comes in really handy. I say this is just a tester. It's not a big problem. But anyway. Well, my battery is just pretty much about shot, so I'm going to have to call this it. And then we'll see if maybe I can actually graft all these things together on uh, YouTube's editing software. Alrighty. That's it for this.